everyone, I'm Angela Habibi and today we will have a chat with my guest Trisha. She's a doctoral scientist and she will tell us something about her research and her life as a scientist. Trisha, would you please introduce yourself? Of course. Hi, I'm Trisha Lahiri and I come from a small town called Dhanbad in eastern India and I'm currently recruited here in Mainz as a doctoral student within the T-Cardio program. So you mentioned T-Cardio, could you please explain us what it is and what it means? Of course. So T-Cardio stands for Thromboinflammation and Cardiovascular Disease. It's basically a three-year uh, research program uh, for the doctorate students and it is funded by the European Union. And the University of Mainz here is the main coordinator of this program. And it has other partnering institutions. One is University of Marseille in France, University of Maastricht in Netherlands, and also the Research Institute uh, ESAS in Dortmund. And together, they all work for understanding the complex mechanisms behind the cardiovascular disease. Well, this is very interesting. So you were selected for the position in Mainz. But what about the other researchers involved? Who are they and where are they located? Okay, so altogether, we are 14 researchers and we come from different countries like India, China, uh, Kazakhstan, Greece, Germany, uh, Chile, Italy and Spain. And uh, currently we have five researchers here in Mainz at Center for Thrombosis and Hemostasis. We have also five researchers at uh, Maastricht, which is um, at Center for Cardiovascular Research Institute, also known as CARIM. And we have four researchers at the Center for Cardiovascular and Nutrition Research, also known as C2V in, in Marseille. And all our projects are uh, interconnected and we work together. But unfortunately, due to the pandemic, we didn't get the chance to meet together, but hopefully soon. Well, I guess social networking is as important as the scientific one. But on to the next question I have for you. What are the advantages of an international corporation such as T-Cardio? First of all, the three institutes that are involved here in, Mar in Mainz, Marseille and Maastricht, they are the leading institutes in cardiovascular research. So they have the bundled expertise and the resources and all are focused on understanding how the cardiovascular disease works. So you can imagine that whatever research output that comes out of this is going to be extremely beneficial, not only for this disease understanding, but also for the patients that are, that are affected by this disease. And from a researcher point of view, we also get this amazing opportunity to work at another institution apart from a home institute and also work with an industry like Bayer's or Boehringer. And uh, this personally helps us in our career, of course, and we get to learn a lot more techniques, learn new knowledge. And personally, it also helps us to uh, learn new cultures and languages. And I think it broadens our personal horizon. Well, I can see how this can be beneficial for young scientists that have to face the challenges of moving to a different countries. So now, because T-Cardio program is focused on cardiovascular diseases, could you please explain us what that means? Yes, so cardiovascular disease is basically disease of the heart and the blood vessels. And you would be surprised to know that it is one of the largest killers and it almost claims uh, 19 million deaths every year. And uh, we have uh, this high rise in cardiovascular disease primarily because of the unhealthy lifestyle that we're having. There are a lot of risk factors which might include um, improper diet which is rich in salt or fats or excessive smoking, alcohol consumption, even air pollution. And then some people are just more prone to having uh, these sort of diseases because of genetic reasons. So I'm pretty sure you and everyone who is watching already know someone who is uh, affected by heart attack or uh, stroke. Yeah, I understand this is a very common disease and our current lifestyle uh, affects its development. So could you please now explain in details how cardiovascular diseases develop? Yeah, of course. I have a small model for you to explain this. So this is how a human heart looks like. And this blue structure are the veins and the red structures is the artery. And this particular red structure is the aorta. Now, aorta is the largest artery in our body and it basically carries blood from the heart to the vessels that is connecting the other uh, organs of the body, which uh, then contains the oxygen and the nutrients. Now, for a healthy heart, if you cut open the aorta or any of these arteries, Normally, this is how it would look like, a hollow pipe, basically. But then, uh, if you continue to have these unhealthy lifestyles, say, a uh, cholesterol-rich diet, then what happens is we have this calcification inside the artery walls, and these are called plaques, and this continues to pile up as, uh, as the time goes. Now, as we progress, these walls get thickened, 
and this you can imagine is going to clog the arteries quite properly and uh, this becomes difficult for the heart to pump the blood through these vessels. Now either of the two things can happen, either this gets completely clogged and the organ that is supposed to get the blood does not get it and it dies off or it uh, causes an excessive exhaustion to the heart muscles because it has to pump a lot harder. And even though these plaques look quite sturdy, but they are quite uh, fragile. So due to uh, this high blood pressure, they can break off and they can transport to smaller capillaries and can get stuck there. In some cases, because of the high blood pressure, it can cause a tear in the blood vessels and it can lead to a blood clotting or internal bleeding. In all of these cases that I mentioned, in some way or the other, the arteries are getting clogged and it will cause some devastating effect to the body. If the artery clogged is uh, going to provide the blood to the heart or the brain, it's going to lead to heart attack or stroke. And if it's going to provide blood to the extreme regions of the body, say the legs, then there is just tissue death. Do you have any tip for the audience on how to lower the risk for cardiovascular disease? Of course, it's uh, very important to have an active lifestyle and a healthy diet. But if that's not possible, at least uh, it's recommended to have at least like do 10,000 steps per day. And that can be easily achieved if you take a small stroll around the city. Well, thank you so much uh, for this explanation and for the tip. Now I have another question for you. So to my knowledge, there are treatments for patients with stroke or heart attack. Mm -hmm. So why is there still a need for research? Of course, what you mentioned is true, but what is not quite popularly known is that EU spends around 210 billion euros every year just for the treatment of this disease. So you can imagine if we focus more on understanding the complex mechanisms behind this disease, we can take off the burden from the disease treatment and maybe also help in uh, making the lives of the patients a little bit better. So I think indeed it is important to sensitize the general public about this topic. and. If there will be three things you wish our audience to remember, what would they be? Well, I can give three take home messages from today. One would be to sensitize the population to identify the early symptoms for, for this disease. This can help us to prevent and even diagnose this disease in the early stages and it's very beneficial. Uh, second would be to focus on the researches that focuses on understanding the cardiovascular disease. It's extremely crucial. And the third one would be um, we at T Cardio Research Program are, of course, focusing on this uh, cardiovascular research. And we hope to come up with research outputs that will help us to understand this disease better and probably make the lives of the patients who are affected by this disease a little bit better and probably in the long run save the lives of our loved ones. Thank you so much, Trisha, for this interesting information and all the best with your research. Thank you. Now, I would like to conclude our talk with a small uh, speed Q&A okay. about the life of a scientist. Okay. And as the first question for you, I have, when did you become interested in science? Well, I have been in love with biology from a very young age, thanks to my mother, who is also a biologist. I have always been fascinated with nature and how the human body works. But I think I started taking seriously about like thinking about research in my high school years. And how did your parents react when you say that you wanted to go for a scientific career? They were really supportive of my choice, uh, although they did have their fair share of worries about the long research career of, uh, you know, of a scientist. But then both of them are from science background and I think that helped a little bit with the conversation. By the way, Angela, you are a researcher as well. So how did it go with you? Well, my parents uh, do not have a scientific background, so at the beginning it was a bit difficult and funny as well to explain to them what I was working on, but they were also very supportive, so I was really lucky. That's amazing. Go on with another question. Yeah. If you could go back in time, would you change anything? Uh, I would probably say to my younger self to have a little bit more confidence in herself and it's okay to make mistakes and, and not to be... And like, you know, if you are scared or nervous, it's good to have that feeling. And as for the last question of today, do you feel it was harder for you as a woman in science? Uh, fortunately, I did not have any evident challenges for being a woman in science as of now. But I think we know that there's already a lot of challenges in this field. Um, but be because I'm a woman from a developing country, I did have to challenge a lot of social societal norms uh, to pursue my dreams. And my parents had their unrelenting support for me and their cooperation definitely helped me to get me where I am here today. 
Well, thank you so much, Trisha, for your time today and thanks everyone for listening. We hope that we informed and inspired young students to pursue a career in science. If you want to know more about us and about our research, I will kindly invite you to visit our website www.tcardio.eu. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.